Thursday subscriber chess stream here on Lee Chess and Twitch. International Fide Master. No, International Master. I should be demoted to a Fide Master. International Master William Pascal. We are um, we're going to be doing game analysis with the subscribers. So if you guys are subscribers to the Twitch stream, I'm not talking about like YouTube or other things. Subscribers to the Twitch stream, you guys can submit or girls can submit a game to be analyzed. We have a pretty long list as usual. We have microphone, video, thing looks okay. No no drop frames. I've got the following list. S4 Tobias Move 11, that's Yobadis, Move 11, Nefidov, Astrobate, um, Mr. Coffee, can't read my own writing. So, I don't know if I missed anybody from like older messages, but if you did, if you did send in an earlier request and I missed it, left it off the list, just let me know. So I've got those six at the moment, Saul, Yobadis, Move 11, Nefidov, Astrobate, Mr. Coffee. JCS, don't know if you sent me something. It's extremely, I've got a big bottle of water here. It's extremely, extremely hot. Um, the hottest it's been all summer here. Okay. <clears throat> he said, at the very least, F4 does not weaken the A5, E1 diagonal. Mm, all right, I'll give it. I'll give you that. So, without further ado, let's get started here. Juicebox Wizard, what's up, man? By the way, I had a hundred bit donation from JCS today, so he's on the board with second place in the bit donation department. He's been very supportive of the stream. I want to thank you, JCS, for all your help. I haven't seen Soltigo. I guess he's tired from streaming. Where Where is he? He's not here yet. Any word about Soltigo? I guess we'll start with with S4. Abba Fossil's challenging me, but I'm not taking challenges. If I did, it would probably be from a subscriber. He said he'd be here, okay. I know he's been more tired. So, this is subscriber stream. We're doing game analysis today. I thought I had a, I thought I had a message here from S4. There, for the stream. I'd like to watch this game. Very interesting, in my opinion. Okay, normally S4 sends me like these 70 move games. Was that Clash Kid? He plays complicated games. Burning the proverbial candle. Thank you for the eight. Move eleven with the eight. The very strange number. Eight. Cheer. Not ten. Not five. But eight. Thank you. Move eleven. There must be a significance behind the eight. Cheer eight. For the stream, I'd like you to watch this game. Here we are. All right, so we'll, we will see. It's Soltigo versus S4. Thanks for the cheer, move 11. Move 11, does that move him into the leaders, the leaderboard there? It moved him up past Soltigo and Astrobate into fifth place on the cheer leaderboard. So he's in the top five now due to that. X1, horse one, also helpful. So, okay, Soltigo is white. He plays knight f3. This is a match between two people who regularly play on my stream. Um, our moderator is Soltigo and Saul, who's like one of the toughest players. This is 6 plus 5 rapid one day ago. This must have been played like on... Was this played on, on Soltigo's stream or something? I wonder what the significance is that these two played each other. So knight f3, b5. I like b5 against knight f3 in particular. It's better than like against e4 directly. e4, b5 gets white. Well, actually, e4, b5 drops a pawn. Okay. I guess I mean like d4, b5. I like it better than d4, b5. d4, b5, e4, bishop, b7. Or d4, e5, etc., etc. So, yeah, I've only played this once in my life against Kushtar Shandor, and he played like e3 which is pretty restrained. Um, we play six player simuls. Okay, so this is like, but it doesn't say simul. Astrobate, you won over the board today, Neil Swint. 
Congratulations. But this can't be a simul game, right? It's... Or are these, like, all separate games? Played as a simul? S4. What's the context to this? Was this played heads up? Or was Soltigo, like, playing a simul or multiple players at the same time? Or what's the deal? Like an unofficial simul? Knight f3, b5, d4, a6. Okay, so this transposes now. I mean, by playing a6, we actually transpose to a kind of St. George. Niels, thanks for subscribing. Thank you guys for supporting the stream by subscribing on Twitch. That's why I'm doing this stream to support the subscribers, to reward the subscribers for supporting the stream. Also, check out my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. No challenge in live. Okay, so it's just like a random challenge. Niels, yeah, we can we can look at a game you played. You'll have to go on the list, though. You'll be last in the list. But, you know, usually we'll get to see all the games. You have to send me send me the game. Send me a link to the game in message on Lee Chess. Mr. Coffee, what's up? It is hot here. Whew, the panda's like... He's taking a shower, cold shower. All right. Yeah, so A6, this transposes unnecessarily. See here, a lot of people have played this Miles. But Bishop B7 makes a little more sense than A6. Who what is up, guys? Alright, A6, E4, accepting the challenge. So now we have a full blown. Wow, check this out. Full-blown, um, yeah, you see Carpub Miles, the famous game. Full-blown St. George defense, but I didn't know about this game Mirage Nachenko played with Carlson. Does anybody have an idea what kind of time control that would have been? I mean, did Carlson really play the St. George? Let's see. Open game. Wait. All right, let's just see what, what the context was for the opening move order. Yeah, it was the same thing, knight of 3 b5. So actually, that's weird. It's the exact same move order. Carlson. Rufus and Dubus said, what? Hey, I just took another game between you and two of my uh, two on my stream this morning. Between you two on my stream this morning. Oh, okay. So Saul and Soltico. Wow, that's weird. So you're you're playing like Magnus Carlson and me, and Anthony Miles. So you're in good company. And Soltico played d5. Okay, so d5. It's like inflexible. Um, shouldn't really be. Neil Swint sent me a game. Okay. Shouldn't really be best, but in practice, you know, I have had some problems dealing with d5. But it's basically very inflexible. I mean, white. I think the ideal is to play like bishop d3 straight away, but he has to play that now. I like to play bishop d3 and queen e2 even before knight f3. If it's like a proper St. George, e4, or rather d4, b5. That's actually the Polish defense. St. George, e4, a6, d4, b5, bishop d3, bishop b7, queen e2. Um, and delay the knight f3. Getting the queen to e2 first. So anyways, so Soltico goes out of theory here with d5. It looks wrong. And it really gives you a way to kind of nibble at that pawn structure with e6. But here, I mean, I might as well turn on the engine. The engine actually likes knight f6 better than e6. It's interesting. Like, I kind of want to attack the pawn chain, but there's nothing wrong with knight f6 first. Morwa challenging us, but we're not playing, we're probably not playing Blitz Morwa. We're just doing like game analysis. So bishop d3, and then, you know, this is interesting, c5. But that's not the move I would recommend. Um, my first reaction is e6, attacking with the central pawn. But you know what? Maybe here we can do. Actually, I got two windows open, that's the problem. We can do c6 instead of e6, basically destroying the center from the flank. Ironically, you know, this might just be better than e6 because you can just take with the knight 
it's not exactly a traditional setup for uh, for a St. George or whatever, but this might even be stronger than E6. So I think outside the box there, C6. The Carlson game is a dragon. A dragon. So C5 is weird. I mean, you're leaving this pawn really secure on D5. I think that's a serious mistake. So he could just play C3, I guess. But in that case, you could play E6, still bust his center. The engine has some ideas to play B3. That's kind of weird. Obviously, C4 is kind of a natural move. So what happens on, say, C4? B takes C4. Very subtle idea by the engine. See, bishop takes c4, knight takes e4 would be like a gambit, where I think that actually white has some pretty scary compensation here. I'm not sure I'd be inclined to take that pawn. It's a lot like a Blumenfeld. So I don't like Saul's move of c5. You know, he's really not destroying the center the way he's supposed to. And and Soltigo, if he plays incisively, has a really good game. c4, and then either take back or this, which was, that's like a sort of Banco idea, like Playing C4, then regathering re re it. I want. I don't know. Regrouping, regathering it. Is that even a word? I, I know there's a word. I'm trying to think of. Re something, obviously. Regaining, regaining the pawn. That's it. Bishop C2. We can regain the pawn gradually. So I think this is important stuff. He plays C5, and then Soltigo plays B3. This move is actually given an exclamation point by the, by the chess engine. Well, I mean, it was given a huge... I give it an exclamation point. Recoup. Thank you. Recoup. And I was thinking of regroup. Yeah, regain, re recoup. Recoup is the move, is the pawn, is the word. The bird is the word. Oh, my God. I can't even speak. Recoup. That's an awesome word. Your brain is there. Mine is not. How many games are before your game? We've got, like, five more games, at least. You're going to have to wait a while. You will have to wait a while. All right. So excellent move B3, apparently. Stopping C4. And then black plays E6, finally. Better late than never. Here, the thing is, you could support your center. I know Soltigo is watching, but I think I saw him. He could support the center with c4. Yeah, this is an interesting recapture now. We had this discussion with Astrobate about recapturing there when people play en passant in the Benoni. It's more dynamic to take with the f-pawn. You know, considering... If you consider how aggressive S4's style is, you know, you'd think, oh, he'd be, like, totally down with F takes. But the problem is, I guess, after this, again, I'm seeing very close similarities here to the Blumenfeld. White just has really strong attacking chances after this. Very, very strong attacking chances. Um, yeah, I don't have AC. I mean, it's really only, like, a few weeks a year is it really bad where I'm at. Um, but it's... It's really, really hot here. Got the fan on. So it's the hottest it's been. This is about as bad as it gets. I'm suffering. I'm trying not, to, trying not to show the signs of my suffering. Got two large drinks. All right, so it turns out choosing the less dynamic move here was the right decision. And now Soltigo could play e5. He doesn't do it. See, there's a lot of moves. Bishop b2, knight d2, queen e2, castles. Well, not castles, because that drops a pawn. And bishop b2 drops a pawn. Okay, he's got to defend the pawn on e4. Or play e5. I mean, even e5 wouldn't be bad, in my opinion. But, okay, bishop b2. Yeah, I mean, Saul is just like, okay, thanks for the pawn. I guess this is a speculative sacrifice. I think it's unsound. White does have some compensation, though. Should white do it? It's probably not necessary. I mean, queen e2 or something like that. Queen e2 looks good. There are interesting complications that could arise by the c4. Take, take, and like trade pawns toward the center type of thing, basically. 
We could force that exchange of C-pawn for E-pawn. Which should favor black strategically in the long run. The only risk, he's opening up a position where he's a tiny bit behind in development. Um, Alright, both these guys like complications. They both like crazy positions. Yeah, now black played bishop d6. So, I mean, I'm drawn to this diagonal and this file. The long diagonal and the file bearing down on g2. So, there's no need for a passive move here, you know. I mean, this this is no time to go insane with, like, rook g8. <laughs> but, no, but seriously, let's play. This is a nice move. Bishop d6. And white sensibly develops. And then knight g5. Which allows some tricky stuff, you know. Maybe some sort of knight h3 check. It's a typical move for S4, who likes complications. So, whereas most people would exchange pieces here, like saving time, basically, S4 decides to go knight g5, which is like a provocative move. Knight takes g5, queen takes g5, knight e4, and that does not happen. But I mean, it looks like black just does, I mean, white does a crazy thing here. He takes on g7. That looks like suicide along the g-file. Immediate suicide. PQLED, welcome. Yeah, I mean, this move is, is just totally, especially against a strong tactician. So that's where it goes for complications, but this isn't complications. This is just a crazy capture. Very, very dangerous. Rook g8. Now, it's amazing if white isn't lost in this position, with both bishops bearing down, and the rook, and potentially the queen coming out. It looks like Soltico should be lost. Please, bishop h6. Now, knight takes f3, knight takes f3, but what's next? I mean, what do we have? Knight takes f3, knight takes f3, rook takes g2 check, king takes g2, queen h4. Something along those lines. Because that's what I'm looking I'm not looking at the computer, I swear, but I'm really looking at this rook sack. Does this work? I was thinking here. There must be some sort of refutation. Ah. Oh. He has bishop takes b5 check. If only there wasn't that check. He's going to pick up this guy here. Yeah, so it doesn't work. So, he had some kind of easy tactic take take queen f6 I was thinking queen h4 but attacking a1 and h how did Soltico not win well he was totally busted s4 is black but he played knight h3 check which doesn't really do anything this move it just doesn't really do anything at all to be honest he totally gives up all of his threats and um I mean, I don't know what the point is to go here, but then White will trade off that attacking piece. So suddenly, he played f5. That looks almost insane, too. Opening up the queen, possibly coming to h5. The king's still in the center. Very, very crazy move. Saltigo doesn't want to take the knight on h3 because the long diagonal does look kind of dangerous. I mean, again, this threat is, like, lively. Just for argument's sake, you know, if you take here, is it queen h4? It's not the only move. I mean, there's again queen f6, but it is the most dynamic. Soltigo didn't want it. He played queen e2. Queen f6, this is a very strong move. And now rook a e1. Apparently this is a mistake, albeit the second best move the computer could find very quickly. Man, it would take a strong stomach. The computer recommends, Stockfish recommends king d7 here. Even I wouldn't. I love the king in the center. Active king, but even this position, I wouldn't do that, man. That's that's an awesome move. Truly awesome move. But you could protect with rook g6. This appears to be like a very good move. 
That move I could find. King d7, I don't think even I... Who li I like to centralize my king early, but I don't think even I... Maybe Soltigo could find it. Saul has no, no interest. He plays e5. And, like... I mean, I guess the only way for white to defend would be some sort of insane computer move like this. But that move is so alien to a human. To give up that piece for apparently nothing... The point is that you can take this, I guess, at some point. Here. And now these center pawns are just too dangerous. So Soltigo blocks his own play, saving his bishop. That's that's impossible to find the move ninety four though. Basically Soltigo is busted. Now he sacks a piece. Wait. I mean, it's hard to resist playing e4, and apparently this, like, loses, but it is very hard to believe it's just utterly losing. Of course, the knight on h3 hanging may have something to do with it. We end up losing that piece at the end of a lot of variations. Bishop takes e4, f takes e4, knight takes e4, damn, this is apparently best. Bishop takes e4. <clears throat> Checkmate is now unavoidable. What? After rook d1. Ah. Hard for me to, um... Hard for me to really, like, you know, teach you guys anything from this kind of game. It's it's exceedingly tactical. Extremely cal calculation-based. I mean, me trying to teach these guys how to play this position... Unless you're really in it, it's hard to get a grip on what's going on here. Apparently black over overstepped the limits of, of sensibility. Because his king is just fried. You'll see, yeah, this, this is similar to another game I saw today. Just outstripping the guy in development. Now it's made in nine. Mate and nine. If you find that, you'll definitely be labeled as a computer. So he's supposed to play bishop takes c5, but this actually is a fairly easy move to find. If Soltigo had time, I mean, you've got to see this is this is falling with check, and the rook is hanging there, in addition to any threats against the black king. So that's a forcing move that shouldn't be overlooked. Rook d1. Now apparently black has this rook takes g2... With the really, really, really nasty threat of rook takes h2 mate on the move. Because everything's pinned. That's a funny variation. Like, even if you take this, this. I love this. What do we got now? Queen g6 check. King h1. Queen g4. That's pretty. Yeah, it's craziness. Even you, spectacular camel, have to admit that it's beyond your normal capabilities. I don't think I would have even found knight takes e4, honestly, if I was white here. Man. I don't know, what happens if you did reverse the move order and did like this first? Now it's like equal. Or only white's, white's only like slightly better here. I would be far more likely to find this, say like the second best move. So Soltigo finds the best move and then he alternates with a totally random move, rook d1. Which seems illogical, I mean really like taking the pressure off the e-file. Consistency, and then bishop takes h2. Bishop takes h2? I mean the problem with that move is that it doesn't threaten, any it doesn't threaten anything. It doesn't threaten anything, you know? The heart of the white pawn, the pawn, um, whatever you want to call it, shield, is the, the pawn on g2. No, I agree it's impossible to see the mate, but I still wouldn't have considered bishop takes h2. You know, forget about finding a move mate in 9, okay? But I still don't play bishop takes h2. That move seems too slow. 
It just doesn't really threaten anything direct. What can we do that's more direct? Yeah, Bishop e5, another move that's like bizarre and impossible to find. What about just developing a piece, like here or something? I mean, you're gonna get me, uh, I'm gonna play knight d7 here. But Saul had the sack of piece for this craziness. It's trap, you cannot take the bishop. Yeah, these guys are like clones of each other. <laughs> but the problem is it just doesn't do anything, you know? Okay, he can't take the bishop, but he can make some other useful move here. Now your king's still trapped in the center. If, if we play knight d7, you'd be like all set, ready to castle queenside. I can't see the times. How much time do we have here? 156 to 213. Oh. There's no bishop takes g2 check, see? We're pinned. It is an amazingly beautiful, complicated position. I'll give you that. Too random. Eventually, Soltigo just couldn't take it anymore. He goes into this. And he's just down a piece. This is not enough to win. Wait, that's two pawns for the piece. Make that one. What did it end in a draw or something? No. Black did win. Okay, now it's like a win, but it's it's a matter of technique and how much time you have left. Guys, I had to start with this game. Man, why did I pick this game to go over first? I have a headache now. This is insane. You both, you both have about a minute left. Where did your time go? The last couple moves, both sides used a lot of time. As soon as the queens left, left, left the board, they started thinking longer. Check this out. Like, they have a minute and a half. Actually, Soltigo had like two minutes here. F3 is a blunder. But it's hard to realize that. So he reaches this ending a piece up, and then suddenly, with one move, yeah, I mean, I agree with king f7. He was afraid of rook f1 check, but we can still interpose the knight, I guess. This looks too dangerous to go across the d-file. Really taking your life in your hands there. So naturally c4 or something. Yeah, that's hard to believe that Soltigo didn't open up the d-file. And now missing bishop f6. Which is such a beautiful pin. Keeping him pinned two different ways. And white's apparently okay after this. You got rook a7 to defend against rook d4, and on the other hand, you got rook e8. But there's too much pressure, white has compensation. Crazy game. Bishop d6, rook e8, and then rook h4. This is where Soltigo lost the thread, I guess. Very strange moment to hesitate here. He could have tripled up, and he didn't realize it. If you need a short one next, yeah. We might have to take Mr. Coffee. Because Tobias' uh, Spectacular Camels game is next. Judging by his style, that's probably not a short one. Notice here, like a lot of people would, would think about taking on d6. But Saul doesn't want that. He's constantly trying to play for complications, even in the ending. He did get back there. He manages to keep pieces on the board without exchanges. And only two pawns left, so... The game was likely decided by time. He finally took this anyway, which is kind of ironic, because he just avoided that. And this may be a draw. There's just not enough pawns left. This is actually an attempt to win with g4. Yeah, I would keep going as well with g5. And I play king g4, but why? 
Why? What if we play G6? Rook F1 check? Oh, it's some sort of problem? Rook F1 check and then takes and then King E7. Oh no. It's probably still a draw though. Like, check this out. Check. King E5. I got a little bit of lag here. Maybe Rook D5. And this pawn is sort of gone. I mean, I don't know about this. Like a kind of Zugzwang scenario. Hard, still hard to win, I would think. So these guys just rack their brains to find the most complicated game they can find. Finally, just a blatant blunder. He loses a rook. <sighs> Man, what a day, what a game. But just settled by time pressure, really back and forth. All right, I got two game submissions. I guess Neil Swin said it twice. All right, Tobias is next. If I pass out, guys, just like, you know, send me a Skype call or something. It's so hot here. All right, we got Tobias. Yobatis. Yobatis, you realize like six, six letters in your name spelled Tobias, but why the E? Ooh, the first one is a mistake. Okay. I'm just going to hug this water bottle. This is my baby. Water bottle. I love you, water bottle. Alright. It's not even cold anymore. Alright. It's from Greek mythology, Ubatis. T O B I A S E. All right. So this is this is the game I'm supposed to go over, right? Yeah. All right. So so Toyobadas. Tell you about this. Is up now. So C4, Knight F6, G3. You can't really avoid the, the Slav and the Queen's Gambit, no matter what you do. So if you're playing C4, Knight F3, you can't stop Black from playing D5. I'm going to crank up the fan to like maximum. Is Soltigo here? Yeah, well, Soltigo's not the only only one that fits that description. There's Soltigo. He's not the only one. Actually, a number of you guys. Acerbate. Actually, Tobias as well. Um, Spectacular Camel has a tendency to make really big blunders. You guys could cut out those blunders. I mean, there's a huge... A huge amount of room for improvement. Just that's my secret, not making big mistakes. I make lots of like little inaccuracies, but not so many small mistakes. Okay, so here we are. Knight f3 should be played. Now queen c2 is very rare. I think I sort of looked at this recently with, with you or someone else, Tobias. Um, I'm not sold on it. I kind of wonder why Black can't play d4. He's already played, you know, he's already played the move c6. So that seems a bit weird. 
But I still don't really see, like, queen c2 doesn't have a lot of significance in this kind of position. You might be able to just flat out lose a tempo. In that Benoni type of position, if we get a Benoni, where you're going to end up playing, like, d3, I just don't see the queen on c2 being very good. I remember seeing Jay Bonin, like, play this in Rapid years ago and being kind of like, well, you know, that move doesn't seem, it doesn't seem very useful. Playable, but not that useful. So, I prefer just sacking the pawn with like knight f3 here. And if you don't like that, you can just play b3. b3 is okay. Although here I guess black can play e5. Hem, hem, hem ant versus Carlson. Who's hem ant? How did he get to play Magnus Carlson? Is that some, some chess.com thing? Probably. I was asking earlier how Moisienko got to play Carlson. Alright, knight f3. But anyway, queen c2. Not really dangerous. Now it's like a queen c2 slav, except black is facing the fianchetto rather than like e3. Knight f3 here. 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 Yeah, so... I mean, now the queen is useful because it, it can recapture on c4. We don't want to see, like, a really boring structure with d takes c, d takes c, like lifeless symmetry. White has not only no advantage, but no imbalance to work with. So the queen has one function that it allows the recapture there. Now black played the move e6, which is pretty weird, I think. Where should the queen go? The black queen will stay here on d8. Maybe rook e8 looks like normal. I'm not a big fan of bishop g4. I don't want to just trade that off without any particular reason. Obviously, if you take here, you're giving up your center. I'm not attracted to this either. There's uh, this guy, Bryant. He's like an American kid. The son of Enrico Savoyano, right? Vlatko Kovacevic. This looks good for me, you know, for white. Queen takes c4. So he goes busy, okay. So rook e8 would be my vote. Once again, I mean, I think still d4 is playable. Maybe not that bad. Underrated move. Alright, so onward and upward. We've got uh, rook e8, probably the best move, playing for e5. Black gets in e5, again, you know, the queen on c2, I'm not sure how well placed it is, objectively. Okay, let's see what happens here. I haven't seen this game, or maybe I did just briefly go over it. e6, bad move, blocking in the bishop, although he can still play like b6, bishop b7, like a Catalan. Right. Alright, let's see. Hold on a second. Yeah, this is interesting, e4. I actually used to do this long time ago when I played the Reiti myself. Usually it's the same troll, dude. That's the problem. But Twitch doesn't do anything about them. There's something going on here. Okay. Okay guys, just wanted to check how many people are in the stream here. It's a small stream usually with the subscribers. 
got knight bd7, bishop f4. So this is weird. Typically, I played this type of idea where I was pushing e5, trying to turn it into a kind of King's Indian attack a lot of the time. Um, queen e2, supporting that pawn. White has a pretty big advantage here. It's like a really good Catalan. So I think, you be honest, you could think about just transitioning this whole concept from a, basically what started as a Reti, Reti or whatever, into a kind of King's Indian attack, basically. You're focusing on the king side. In the Reti, normally you're not necessarily focusing on the king side, but with this pushing this pawn up to e5, you turn it into a pure... Yeah, this is getting a little out of control. Um... One second, guys. But this is the worst it's been. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. All right. So back to the stream here. Bishop f4. I'm not sure what this move does exactly. It's kind of routine developing move. You might be able to put it on d6, support it there. Um, you've got a serious problem with that 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 guy. So um, hold on a second, guys. Just one sec. Yeah, I mean, I think that Soltigo knows this one well. So, Bishop f4, rook e8 seems like a good move. Probably should have played that before. Bishop d6 makes sense, sinking the bishop in there to the dark squares. Black can trade it off like bishop d6, most likely. Black can also play e5 at this point. Which looks kind of interesting. Yeah, he did play bishop f8 right away. Now there's weaknesses all around the dark squares, though. Like a consequence. Knight g8, knight bd2. King g7. Rook e1. Well played. Very promising King's Indian attack now. That's all this is. King's Indian attack with the, with the queen c2. Even c4 is a move typically played in these Queen King's Indian attack. Can we set the chat to subscriber mode? That's probably a good idea. Can we do something like that?
Any ideas, Saltigo? The space advantage here is is really Space advantage here is really, really serious. Um, yeah, here G4 would be strong. Yabax is going for the queen side. Merle Dixon, thanks for the support. Neil Swint, thank you as well. So, Bishop D7. It's funny that... I mean, I, I don't mind this expanding on the queen side, but I feel like your biggest advantage is on the king's side. And you should be, like, as I said, transitioning to a king's Indian attack here. Yubatis is playing on the queen side. I agree it looks really bad for black on both flanks. You know, he has no space on both sides of the board. But this move let white structure get kind of broken. So, can we prepare that? Bishop d7. I would have been on the king's side. Right away, like, if we go back a couple moves here. I'm, I'm thinking you should be really going for the king's side play. Maybe g4, knight h4 you don't like. All right. b4, h4, h5. Possibly h4. If h5, like, bishop h3... I think something like that would be promising. Yeah, it's extremely passive for black. But he did achieve something here. He breaks up white's queen side. So basically after this, a takes b. Now white's stuck with an isolated pawn. However, there is there's pressure on b7. Yeah, I, I did see this game. It's been a little while since I looked at it. But it looked like very Karpovian. H6. Here I think I would think about H4. Black's gonna play G5 on the other side. For real. Is he gonna play G5? He could take it and play Bishop H3. Actually also Knight H2 is a good idea, controlling G4. Very promising. So queen b3, h6, knight f1. One side, you know, one minute you're playing on the queen side, now you're playing on the king side. Here, knight e3. Now this move I'm not that thrilled with because I didn't really want to trade pieces, but it is his best piece on f5. White's advantage remains. I'm not sure about which way to capture here. It's also possible to take with the queen. Take with the F pawn, rook F8. Now black's ready to play F6. He's been very passive this game, but he needs to do something aggro. A little bit aggressive. He does finally do it. Finally plays F6. Which is like the first, even slightly aggressive move he's played the entire game. And then white plays knight H4. And basically forces him to close it up again. With F5. I guess you could play queen F7 there. I like that better, because we want to break the center. When black plays f5, he can't break the center any longer. So I think this was a mistake by black here on knight h4 to play f5. And now it reminds me of a stonewall dutch. g5, knight g2, and now white has a free hand on the, on the queen side with like a5, a6. This is, this is exactly straight out of a stonewall dutch what you see now before you. Very well played. Squeezing black here with the threat of a6. Maybe Yabata should play d4 on move 1. If he likes this kind of position. But is there any kind of f4? There's never f4 because the bishop takes g6. So he has no counterplay. Extremely long game. Queen c7, a6. And then you're just eating your way across here through the 6th rank, probably. A little bit like a King's Indian type of strategy. 
Break your way in through the queen side, then eat eat your way laterally, like Pac-Man. Bishop takes a6, rook takes a6. Rook takes a6. So even in the simplified ending now, without that bad bishop, black's pawns are very hard to hold. Queen takes, pawn takes. This is winning now. But he had no way to protect the c-pawn. So he's just losing a pawn. This is a kind of kg move. Queen b7. Nefidov, I hope your game is next. No, it's not next, actually. It's next after next. Yeah, so this is kind of tricky. Queen b7. The, in order to take this pawn, White would have to allow penetration down into the position with, with queen b1. So it's not going to be easy to win there, actually. Although clearly better. He just kind of rolls over and dies with queen takes b6. Now it's over. Because this pass pawn is just too strong. And he just wins a piece, I believe. You can see this coming. And I don't know what the best way of doing this is. <laughs> I guess a little patience here would have made the game a lot easier. Rook h8. Threatening rook h7 check, I guess. But this is good enough. You're up a piece. Whew. Oh, Astro Bay, you got a storm out there and your connection went out. All right. Black finally resigns after trading off the last piece there. But again, you bought us. It's a really good question. Should you be playing on the king side or the queen side once you earned that space advantage there? I guess ideally both sides, but um, my preference is on the king side. It's usually more, more decisive, more quickly decisive going for the king. Okay. So move 11 is next. And then... Um, Nefedov. This is from the past weekend, under 24 under the Marshall Chess Club. He's black and a Queen's Gambit declined. What's up everyone? Welcome to my chess stream here. It's Thursday, so we do a subscriber stream going over games of the subscribers. Please excuse me if it's uh it's a little slow going today, but I'm like on the verge of a heat stroke. Extremely, extremely hot here. Alright. So this is subscriber stream Nefedov no, move eleven. Nefedov wanted to be next. He is next to next. See on my stream did I just move it out of position? It's okay. All right, so move 11 black in the Queen's Gambit. So awesome series on Bafinik on chess lecture, by the way. Thank you, move 11. So I just did a recent series on, on Bafinik, best strategic victories. Whew, man, I can hardly breathe, man. It's so hot in here, wow. Um, all right, d4, knight f6, c4. We're going to the Queen's Gambit. White played knight f3, played d5, plays knight c3, played bishop e7. He exchanges. Now, actually, move 11 put in some analysis here. Bishop f4. Bishop f4, I played with black one time in my life. I drew with Zoltan Ribley, which was a miracle. Because so I wasn't prepared to play him with black, I think. I was expecting to play him with white in the team match. And, and when I got there, I realized I was a different color. And I was like, oh my god. You know, he'll be prepared for my Nimzo, King's Indian, or whatever. What am I going to do? And I surprised him with the Queen's Gambit. He played Bishop F4. And then um, somehow I drew using this weird system with, like, Knight A6, C5, and Knight A6. Basically this, like, takes and Knight A6. I showed this, I guess I showed this to, this to um, not in this piano, but move 11. But that's very much a sideline. Okay, so, anyway, Bishop F4 is probably the most theoretically popular line. Um, a small talent frees it. Good idea, man. Good idea. I don't even have my towel. Um, don't even have my towel for the stream. So, Bishop F4, castles. 
and now e3. Knight bd7. Queen c2. This is just analysis that move 11 put in there. This looks pretty standard. Rook d1. C takes d4. Rook takes d4. Now queen a5. Bishop g3. Is this a Mamajarov game? Mamajarov versus Giri. There's other games as well. And Mamajarov is wicked. But it's still hard to get an edge no matter what no matter what line you play. So the thing is here, what we have to remember about this exchange variation is that white has played knight f3 pretty early. And so by playing knight f3 pretty early, he throws away any kind of possibilities of him getting one of these lines with like knight on g to e2, which are considered kind of like the most aggressive and flexible variations. So I think that's kind of a commitment that's not in white's favor. You could also play knight takes d5 if you're playing a weak player and you just like were content, or a strong player rather, and you're content with a draw, you can transpose to like, obviously some something similar to like a semi-tarash. Okay, so e takes d, bishop g5, castles, e3, c6 is not necessarily a move you have to play. Good evening, guys. Good evening, chess pots or whales, Tom Miller. Um, so here I'm I'm more in favor of playing, I guess, knight bd7 rather than than c6, move 11. I like to delay the the c6. However, with white knight on f3. He doesn't have a lot of the most aggressive lines available, but the idea with knight on bd7 instead of c6 would be to be able to play like c5 in one go. At a later time, if you play this, you can play c5 in one go at a later time if white tries to castle queenside. So c6 is kind of like the main move. Bishop d3, knight on bd7, queen c2, no, he castled. Yeah, this is... This is all pretty standard. I used to play this for white, but eventually it got kind of boring. You know, always playing the same plan every single time. Um, okay, rook e8, queen c2, and now you're supposed to play knight f8. This is what he did. This is a standard position. Karpov has played h3 here. Um, I think that's considered like one of the main lines. While kind of counterintuitive, because it actually weakens white's king side. Typically, there's like a battle line in the center of the board, and uh, white attacks on the queen side with a minority attack. Black tries to play knight e4, and eventually play for f5, f4, some kind of attack on the king side. So, I feel like h3 would weaken white's king side in a way that's kind of strange, you know, to, to weaken the white king side. But it is apparently the most common move. I think I've played, I've even played this which I have I have seen with the idea of like capturing on e4 knight e4 bishop takes e4 at some point maybe not right away but let's see bishop takes e7 queen takes e7 and bishop takes e4 didn't we just see this on the stream very recently maybe it was another botfinic game this is a very botfinic kind of plan, the rook on a to e1, and then we break with f3. I, I saw this position very recently. I have no idea where it was. Um, maybe a Botvinnik game, maybe a modern game. I can't remember. So that's an alternative plan for white. Um, as I said, I did play this years ago with the white bits, but uh, the, the main line is like rook b1, gone for minority attack. That's what your guy does? Wait. Oh, your guy played knight e5. Whoa. Okay. So, he wants to set up this Pillsbury bind. Harry Nelson Pillsbury. F4 and kingside attack. Yeah, but this is a known idea. So, funny things happening here. You're supposed to play, like, knight g4, I guess? But maybe Matt's move is good. Knight here, bishop takes e7. 
There's also Bishop about 4 I love this because White has this... No, that's in a different line. Wait, wait. Bishop about 4 Well, I mean, trading pieces is good for Black to probably equalize. Bishop d6 and shake hands. It's a draw. More or less. More or less. Um, so you did this. Now, I didn't, I didn't know this was good. It looks inherently passive. But it has a decent score for Black. Now your opponent played bishop f4, so there's a really nasty trap here. I mean, there may be a way for white to trap the black queen with bishop c7 in some way. Knight takes f7, or like knight takes d5, followed by pawn takes d5, knight takes f7. You know, imagine if black just passed here, like a6. Could we, could we do like knight takes d5, c takes d5, knight takes s7, you see this still wouldn't be enough, because the queen can escape. I want to make this work so bad, this way of trapping the black queen on c7, I can't find a way to do it. So there's still no, no easy way. Go back here with knight f3, you threat, threat to play knight takes d5. Anyway, um, all right, so knight d7, bishop f4, and this is the game. Keeping the pieces on the board when you have a space advantage, good idea for move 11's opponent. Um, dwar up, swar up, swar up, swar. Swar up, dar. Knight d6 now. Right. I mean... I guess I would consider either f6 or knight takes e5, you know, some kind of move. But this this trades pieces, so that seems right. He could play d takes. This is definitely like what Soltigo would do. Shanisha, Shanisha. I don't know if that's Serbian correct. Shanisha Saric. Any relation to the other Saric? All right, I don't know. But knight g6 given dubious by either move 11 or, or the computer. But I didn't base this on any kind of tactics. Oh, the tactics work here. So he has it. Oh my god, he didn't know about it. Knight takes g6 and then knight takes d5. Move 11, you walked into this. The famous trap. I was trying to find a way to make it work, but it actually worked in the game. Phew, man, he doesn't know about it. I thought that's the whole reason for playing bishop f4. I thought he was, like, actually trying to physically play for this trap. Damn, and he doesn't see it. That's a pity. White just wins instantly, like, this key central pawn with knight takes d5. Pawn takes d5, bishop c7. Game over. Game, set, and match. You can't take the pawn, but your position is, is terrible. He's also threatening this. Just no, no way out. Now you know the dangers of playing a new opening. Always eliminate the offender. That's what Roman would do. Knight takes e5, bishop takes e5. Offer a draw here. The problem is if your opponent's lower rated, you have a bit of a problem. What would ne like Nezmadinov do? with black here. I guess he'd go like knight g6 and maybe let's say you go back Richard Pert how do you play this for a win for black? Very difficult to do I really don't know like knight h4 with the idea of knight f5 maybe can't do it because you drop a pawn on h7 yeah, the knight on g6 is kind of awkward. So you just have to trade the bishops off and offer a draw. I guess that's the best policy. So Charlie Cobb did. Charlie Cobb beat a 2200 here. Alright, I mean, maybe it could happen. After, like, bishop takes d6, queen takes d6. You know, you could still get this Nezbedinov type of stuff going on. And maybe f5, f4. But it's really gone against the grain. Rook a b1. Let's see how this went. Rook a b1. 
Charlie played bishop e6. What would Nesmedinov do? Bishop g4 provoking. How does he win with black, man? I mean, this looks really hopeless. He's just passively defending. Black's just clearly worse now. But we, we transposed to a, another game. Well, wow, that's weird. How did that happen? When did we transpose? So Cobb played rook c8. Well, at least that stops b5. Typical structure for this minority attack. But wait, it's just better here. All right, so you went wrong. G6, H takes G6, Rook B1. He's just focused on this one plan. Now your queen is not trapped. B4 and then B5. So the problem here is we need to get the knight to C4 for this to work. Um, are we guaranteed to play knight C, knight B6, knight C4? And how strong is the counterattack like e4? You have to judge these things when you play b5. Also, how strong is a4? White played really badly in the next couple of moves. Um, maybe not. Maybe I'm exaggerating. All right, I just didn't really like it. But a4 looks natural. a4, a6, a5. That's like what I would have done. That's what like... Yasser Sarawan would have done if he was playing Kasparov or something like just stop the dude from having a knight on b6 that's not happening and then we'll just defend our b4 pawn and we can't be worse no this is like easily the safest um, but I admire move 11 for having the guts to play b5 because a lot of people would have done like Charlie Cobb and just had a passive position Still, there's no pleasant game after a a4, a6, a5. Although a lot of people would be reticent to play a5, I think it's really important to stop Black from playing this plan. Once I get that plan in, I mean, Black's probably better. The knight's just very disruptive. So b5, he fails to exploit it with a4, and now you're here. Still, you should play a4, but you're getting the knight into c4. a4, a6, black's okay. You can block his play along the c file. And then move 11 outside the box, getting aggressive, actually, with a5. And I thought the guy did really well. White did really well not to mess this up. But check this out. Here, in this position, he finds a4. Wait. I thought that was a that was an amazing move, first of all. Or maybe not. Wait a minute now, what am I missing here? Why couldn't you take B takes A? What did you think here? That seems like logical. Queen B two, knight C four. Man, come on. This actually looks pretty good. Knight takes a4, knight takes a4, rook a1. Oh my gosh. Did anybody see this line? Knight takes a4, knight takes a4, rook a1. And we get the piece back. Because the knight has nowhere to go. Eh, eh, eh. No, 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 no. There's nowhere to go without dropping it back with knight b6, rook takes a5. That's hard to see, though. So, move 11 played b4, which looks really good. It looks like it's just game over. No doubt that's why he played it. But surprisingly, after this move, bishop d7, rook a1. Right, now here, I saw the game quickly, but I didn't analyze it with the computer. I assumed you had queen a8. My problem was that I thought he had bishop c7 on that. So what am I missing here? You actually have what? Rook takes a4. So actually move 11, I don't understand. I mean, when I went over the game quickly, I thought, oh, this is why rook takes a4 doesn't work. But you, you, he doesn't have this. So actually, you're winning a pawn 
Rook B1. Rook takes A4. Rook takes A4. Queen takes A4. Queen takes A4. Knight takes A4. With some chances to win. I don't know why he declined that. After A4. Here. 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 He didn't play Queen A8. He played this kind of crazy move. C5. I was pretty shocked by this. It's just giving white, you know, improved structure, I would think. But you missed the shot, bishop takes a4, oh my god. Or you saw it and miscalculated. I didn't see this at all. Bishop takes a4. So you basically snipe a pawn for free. I think this was a fast time control, 90-30? No, not that fast. You shouldn't miss this, though. Man, you would think that's why he played c5. I missed the point. But move 11 somehow talked himself out of bishop takes a4. He just did rook takes c5. Rook takes c5, queen b3. Now rook a5. But here. And the guy looks like a genius. After all said and done. Black still is queen e8. But after this... This is kind of strange. It's like white's better. Hey, I'm down a pawn, but I'm better. That was really scary. He's just better now. Isn't that convenient? And he actually loses this game. Queen takes b4, knight c4. White's slightly better. Move 11's defending. Trades down. That's a nice tactic here. I don't know how it works. So that's amazing. Look at this tactic. Knight takes e3, queen takes e7, rook takes e7, rook takes e7, knight takes d1. Haha. Ha. I like, I want a pawn. No, it's not that clear. Like, rook e8, there's this threat. I don't know. So, that's hard to see. At this point, you've got to content yourself just holding with the draw with black. Rook e8 tries to get active. Knight d6, the guy trades it off, and now it's, this is a draw. Grandmaster or strong player is going to torture you here. You should be able to hold this. This move here, here, and then really well played. It should be 5 because rook takes d5, rook a1 mate. So here, this was cute. Now, this is really a draw. But watch what happens here. And I didn't like the way the move 11 played this. I don't mind that he's just moving back and forth. Okay, fine. But at this point, when the guy goes into three, we move back and forth, h4, okay. And I didn't like f6. Because you start to fix your pawns on dark squares. You know, I don't like that those pawns are getting fixed on dark squares. Why could have played g4, yellow dragoon, what's up? Why could have played g4 right away, and this actually happens in the next couple of moves. And I thought black had to be a little bit careful about you know, fixing those pawns on dark squares. So f4, I don't know about that. It's the best move according to the engine, whatever. Here, check. So I started to feel uncomfortable here. The black, you know, might have to worry about f5, but apparently it's not a problem. So he could have even exchanged bishop for knight now. Here, and then watch this. This guy is like 1880 US, I guess. G takes F, G takes F, King C6, and this is a draw. King C6, I guess, King D3, King C5, King C3. Let's see. King D3, King D6, King D4. But watch what happens. He plays this. And then he's lost. I mean, that's unbelievable, dude. He just resigns. And now he just just resigns. Because you can come over here and you can actually free the one pawn. But you're gonna you know, you're gonna lose this guy. And we're just in time to, to promote. So he actually lost. How how is that even possible? Eighteen eighty, wow. 
All right, Nephidob's up next. So it's good to have Yellow Dragoon here, another strong master level player, um, to overlook this game, these games. Second opinion. Yeah, how could you commit suicide like that? I mean, if the time, if the flag was hanging or something in a blitz game, I could understand, but it's hard to believe that the guy who's almost 1900 US would would do this, the self-immolation here. He, he like couldn't play king and pawn in games. He thought he was lost, so he panicked. Like king d3, it's simple opposition, right? King c5, king c3, king d6, king d4, king c6, king d3. Where do you try to win? You know, opposition. Wade actually has an extra move, but he shouldn't need that. That's what we're saying. There's no penetration here. Can't go to e6. So Wade doesn't even need h5 actually king c3 you know we just hang out um all right so nefidov was next nefidov we're streaming till seven guys what time is it now it's almost six that's u.s time all right what did i click on now black can keep equality rather than simply here i would think yeah yeah, he was, and I guess why he was never winning, he was slightly better at one moment in the minor piece and rook end game. But um, it was kind of weird on the queen side. Move 11 missed a lot of opportunities. This is Nefedov, he's probably black. Oh, this is against me. Well, this is our correspondence game, okay. So I played this correspondence game against Nefedov, it's rated correspondence. Asturbate, did you miss analysis of your game? No, you're next. Um, unless you're living in the future, in which case you missed it. So. Alright. If you have a time machine, it is possible that you missed it, Asturbate. God, I'm funny. C takes... <laughs> I laugh at my own jokes. That's I hate people that do that, don't you? Laughing at their own jokes. C takes D5, C takes D5. So I played this. And it's funny because, you know, Nefedov is like, he lives in England where everyone plays the Trompowski. And, and I, I'm not English, and I didn't know how to play the Trompowski, but, but I played against it a lot. It just feels like the Trompowski, just the C-pawns are off the board. Anyway. Black has additional options. Queen b6, as you'll see. We've got Asturbate, Mr. Coffee, and Niels. So bishop g5, h6, and, you know, what's interesting here is, like, in a normal Trompowski, anti-whatever it is, you know, neo-Trompowski, in the neo-Trompowski, you would go, like, bishop h4, and black would get a good game with knight h6. I can't believe that Ivan Sokolov allowed this and lost to some, I guess he's, like, Iranian guy. Wow. And that's really lame. I mean, that's kind of known in the normal d4, d5, bishop g5, that you shouldn't allow f6, bishop h4, knight h6. But Sokolov just did it here. So you go back to d2. And you see there's a lot of games. All these different, like, 2600s have tried this line. Where is the Ponda? Ponda's next. so hot here guys I'm just I'm just gonna relax okay so Panda doesn't really like the game analysis stream he's more into like the live games all right let's see what happens so we went h6 bishop g5 h6 bishop h4 I was just gonna show you you know the idea there f6 bishop d2 how this piece looks both ways it's sort of you know, open Um, could you try to take advantage of f6 with some sort of gambit? Like, wait. Oh, this is a great game. Dudes, this is a great game. Check out this game here from 2017. I actually did a video on this game. But just for a second, let's take a look. It's Ria Zantsev against Blomquist. Okay. Okay. This was the best game ever. If you haven't seen it already, watch this. 
So this inspired me to play this line. He does e5, like Blomquist goes real psycho, like trying to play the sharpest possible way. e4, but just a beautiful game. I'm going to play this quickly because we need time. Knight e2. Like, I don't know. This had to be like some sort of home analysis, dude. There's just no way that like Riazantsev came up with this over the board. Um, this line is unambitious for white. Um, I wouldn't say that, you know. It's kind of interesting. But um, I just wanted to show this quickly. This awesome game that Riazantsev took him out. Here, like, bishop c4. And black's okay. Like, that's the scary part about this. Like, black is actually okay still. Like, even allowing, like, bishop f7 check. So he takes here, bishop f7 check. The computer is like zero. No, seriously. King d7. And you think, oh, black's out of his mind. He's totally lost. But it's not. Like, he's, he's okay. But he has to walk a very, very narrow tightrope. Takes, rook takes, king c7, and then he sacks his queen. And this is actually okay for black. This is this is insane. I, I forgot how this happened. But rook d1 check, king c7, king e, and bishop e8. Now check this out. I guess this was his blunder. Like his first mistake. You know, bishop g4. So if he goes knight c6 instead, black is compensation for the queen. Like, full compensation for the queen. Poor Blomquist. All he did was, like, play one little inaccuracy. Dude, check out the... Anyway, like, check out the... The analysis. Zero inaccuracies, zero mistakes, zero blunders. Eight average cent upon loss by Ria Zantsev. Illuminati. Like, this was just an amazing game. But anyway, guys, back to what we're talking about here. My game against... Uh, I highly recommend you, you play through that, though, a couple times. My game with Nefedov here, h6, bishop h4, queen b6. This much is book, apparently. This is the first time I've ever played it. And then queen takes b2, knight takes d5. I haven't looked at this yet. So apparently queen c1 was played in a game. Saveli Gobalov, Galubov. I should know I played him, but I forgot. Okay, queen c1 is possible as well. Here, here, here. So I'm just following the theory at this point. Irish Championship. Good luck. An FM attempt. Strongest ever edition. Who are the top seeds in the Irish Championship? You've got Baburin. Mark Kelly. Um, Sam Collins. Astana. Who's playing? Queen C2. Right. So queen c2 here. And then, okay. So at this point, I left book against Nefidov here. It's, you know, it's correspondence. So you can see, you can see the moves that have been played, not the actual names of the players. Um, but you can see moves that have been played. And... I was afraid to play king d1 for some reason here. But let's take a look. If I play king d1, Mikulevsky did this last year. King d1, knight a6, e4, bishop d7, bishop takes a6. So I looked at this, but I was unimpressed. Rook c8, queen takes c8. Yeah, I didn't know this was Mikulevsky though check here here I didn't really get this you know this looks to me like it's some, some sort of weird draw what happens if king c6 
It's just a forced draw line. I was actually concerned about what was going on here. My head started spinning when I tried to look at this line, so I, I was like, no, I'm not going to do this. This is too weird. Too weird. I don't know. So against Nefidov, I just played this move I invented over the board, which is actually not bad. Well, Yellow Dragon, your 12th seed. A6, that's a lot of players. So it's like an open. This seems logical for both sides so far. And then Nefidov went crazy with a really weird sequence of moves I, I just didn't expect from him. First of all, Knight B4. Right, open. Um, Knight B4, I go here. And he played F5 and I thought, you're out of your mind, man. I could even play a3, but my actual concern about that was that this a pawn would become weak eventually. So after I thought about it for a while, I decided, okay, like there's no harm in letting him play knight d3 check. I'll just play bishop f3. And he's like weakened his king side, but then he goes g5. I was like, you got to be kidding me. You know, this, this looks insane. So honestly, I thought Nefida was going to lose this game in like 15 moves or something when he played f5 and g5. Yeah, it sounds like a strong a strong tournament. Um, Yellow Dragoon. So Bishop G three H five, and then he goes totally nuts. Looks like I played pretty reasonably well, but after this point, I didn't know what to do. It's weird that I missed Bishop D one. Because later on, I had the idea of of doing that. I actually played it like a move later. So I just basically wasted the tempo. I guess I just realized. But I was freaked out by Nefedov's aggression on the king side. Apparently this gives away all my advantage. I have to play bishop d1. Obviously I want to bring my knight to e2. And I keep my king on d2. So everything works out. But this is just a blatant loss of tempo very very bad move and then now I'm lucky you know he didn't play b5 the computer says b5 and he has the advantage because bishop b7 is coming down I'm actually worse because of this one wasted tempo he does all these crazy weakening moves and I'm worse because I made like one tempo loss so we got here wasted my tempo he played passively and then I'm back in the game it's funny that he was playing all these pawn moves on the king side, but he was too resistant to playing b5, which was apparently a strong move. He figured that was enough. No, there it is, b5. Knight f4, king f7, and then right here I thought was like the critical position, but I couldn't... I just couldn't find anything for white. But I guess I didn't have anything, period. That's all there is to it. So an endgame came up here where I can win the exchange or could I win the exchange? I guess not yeah I did the best I could I took here I took here then I'm like oh my god the knight's coming to e4 it's a killer so I, I like have to grovel for a draw now bishop e5 and I'm gonna trade that because this threat is so strong Maybe the computer's suggestion of f3 is actually not too bad. The dragon costume. You can do cosplay and chess at the same time. Cosplay. Bishop takes f6 check. That'd be awesome. Streaming as a dragon. Don't try it with the hot weather I have here right now, though. Don't try, like, breathing any fire. Rook c8. And then I'm just groveling for a draw, groveling for a draw. Okay. So we reach this ending, and I'm like, you know what? Okay, this is just a draw. But then I started to see that I, I got a little scared, because at this point, I want to play g3, but I was concerned that he's playing a5, king c5. 
maybe quickly. So I was scared I didn't have enough time to play g3, but maybe this really would have been a better move. g3, a5, king, king d2, b4, or let's say king c5. It looks like I have kind of force field. It was safer to play g3. But what did I do? I did e4, pawn takes e4, bishop takes e4, and then he has this g3 move. And suddenly, I was really scared I might lose. And here I made another bad move. Like, I think I should have played bishop g6 rather than bishop f3, but I played bishop f3. Oh, no, I did play bishop g6, sorry. Here, check, here, and then I went back, and then he went back. He played b4 here. Now when he goes back here, see this is where I thought, okay, I should play bishop g6. But suddenly I was scared of, of bishop d5, so I offered a draw here. And I think Nefedov should should play for a win. Um, because this is pretty weird. In my deepest, deepest mind, I believe this has to be a draw somehow, but I was like, oh my god, I don't know exactly how to attain a draw here. So I offered a draw and hoped he would take it, and he did. But actually, you know, it's pretty weird. I'm like, I've got two pawns in the right color, but this g3 pawn is, like, killing me. And he has another pawn over here. So he definitely should have played for the win. I don't know what I would have played. Like, bishop g6, look at this. I might, I might be losing right away. I feel like there's got to be a draw somehow. But how do I stop the g3 pawn? Oh, I know. I was thinking about, like, bishop g4. This looks to be lost, though. That's amazing. So check this out. Here, 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 here. And now he just starts walking over and taking the pawns. Life's not fair. If this is lost... Life is just not fair. Two pawns each. This looks lost. So bishop f3. Yeah, I have to play like bishop f3. Then I thought maybe he can do like a decoy. b3. King c3, bishop d5. Okay, but here I can maybe take on h5. Yeah, this is actually a draw. Isn't it? Why can't I? This isn't a draw? Why is this not a draw? Come on. This is the same position. I'm crazy. All right, that's why. <laughs> that's the exact same position, dude, that you were just talking about. Yeah, this is scary. So, whoa, I can take here. I can take here and take here. And I thought I was toast. Wow, that's destructive, so... He can hold this. Pawn down. Probably there is a way to draw, but I had I would have had to be like ultra pre precise. Okay, RK guys, we got 25 minutes left. I've got three games left to go over. All right, so Asterbate, Mr. Coffee, and Niels. Um, Niels. Asterbate, where's Asterbate? Where's Astrobate's game? I went too far. All right. Bird's opening. I think it will be an E45. Wait. You're playing in 1950 as black in round one. In E45, you're white? I'm so sick of preparing. I wish, I, w I really miss the days when you could just play and, and like have people not know what you play. All right, this is Astrobate. It's a quick one. I mean, we've had so many long games. So, request computer analysis. Alright, so f4. Apparently he played f4 by accident. f4, what happened? Knight c6. That's a move I've never tried against f4. Looks like Soltigo. F4, knight, c6. Why not? You can play anything. E4, e5. The symmetrical birds. I love that. I told the story about how my friend, when we were like 1500, 
he encountered the, the F4 and he had never faced it before and he knew the symmetrical English. So he did the symmetrical birds. We called it the double Dutch. That was our joke. Um, hey, it's been in a game. I don't know if I have time. We'll see. So E3, this, this is okay. You can also play, I prefer the like Leningrad type approach with G3, but this is fine. I like G3 a little bit better, but it's up to you. You can also play maybe D3. It seems a little lame though. So E3 and now D5. Okay, that setup's a bit weird. You know, it seems like now you could play like a Nimzo with Bishop B4. I like that. If Black achieves E5, he might have a decent position. So I guess, is D4 a threat? You know, ask another question. B3. I like B3 as well. You're going to play Bishop B2 and create this Bird Larson type of thing. And then if he tries to play D4, you could bust him with maybe Bishop B5 anyway. This looks really promising. Check this out. Like, if he takes here, I was just going to sack a pawn. Um, yeah, that's actually really good compensation. Good pawn sack. So, bishop b5, bishop d7, super passive, but it's okay. Castles, e6, d4. That's kind of weird. I feel like you have a much, much more flexible pawn structure. So by playing d4, he's sort of selling out. b3 is the way to go. You play a bird larsen style. Control this diagonal, control the e5 square. Can I highlight that square there? It's nice blue, blue square. Green. Blue. Red. Beautiful. Okay, bishop b2. Yeah, yeah, you played it like a check Benoni. But okay, if you're gonna play like this, look. You've got this bishop out here, it's your good bishop. He's got his bad bishop there. You're basically set up to trade these bishops and that's something you don't really want. You know, so bishop b5 no longer, it no longer really makes sense with d4. The best move according to the engine is bishop e2. How ironic. Losing a tempo, bringing your bishop back. You gotta think about that. If he trades his bad bishop for your good bishop, he has a good position. Knight h4, leaving the center, violating principles. No good. Look at that tactic that pops up. You've never seen this one before. Knight takes d4. Bishop takes d7 check. Knight takes d7, hitting the guy over there on h4. A very funny way to win a pawn. So. Yeah, this is a crazy move violating principles. What made you play that knight h4? You're just tempted into some kind of crazy threats that you don't have. Master bait too optimistic. Even in a closed position, you have to consider your development like high priority. Knight h4 not developing. He also spends the same thing, you know, two moves on the same move. Um, this is a move that you played actually recently with black. But at least his move is like placing the knight in the center of the board. I think that's that's vital. What time is it? 6.12. We have plenty of time left. I was thinking it was later than it was. Alright, so we should have enough time for a Haber Bombs game. I was thinking we had, we had a lot less time. Okay, we have till 7. <clears throat> um, so his knight is in a very good centralized position. He allows this tactic. He's basically playing for this cheapo, and he gives you your crazy position where you wasted a move, put it on the side of the board. He justifies your position with knight e4. A bad move isn't a bad move unless it's exploited, right? And bad moves become good moves if you don't take advantage of them, and that's what happens here. Like, basically, Astro Bay makes like the, the worst possible move. 
You know, the only thing that's going for this move is that it's like an aggressive move. I mean, this is this is possible too, right? That's safer than playing knight h4. But there's almost no way this is going to work out in White's favor. Because Astro Bates moves on this aggressive side, he had one little way the guy could possibly go wrong, and he did it. I mean, what is the chance? Queen h5 check? g6? And now knight takes g6. Nice job. Now he does have knight f6. It looks like, um, what is it called? The Latvian Gambit lines. Carlson. So, knight f6, queen h4, rook g8, it's just like a Latvian. Now the, the problem is that, well actually, could we consider queen h3 for a minute instead of queen h4? You see, this move has a distinct advantage. The queen isn't as mobile, but it gives the knight a retreat square back to h4. Actually, what am I talking about? I mean, you could just take on an f8, probably that's best anyway. So, yeah, Astrobe did the worst possible thing he could do. He blundered the, the obvious blunder. He played knight e5. Losing a piece. You know, you could do this. Probably like the lesser of the evils now. Bishop takes c6. Bishop takes c6. Now, then you can choose between knight e5 or knight takes f8. And I don't know, objectively, which is better. But they kind of come down to the same thing, because the guy will likely trade it off with his bishop. Yeah, so this is sad. He just dropped a piece with knight e5, and the dude does not take it. Actually, it's not dropping a piece. It's even more complicated. You have to take. He takes on b5. You take on f6. He takes your exchange on f1. You're just down the exchange now just down the exchange with a very bad bishop on c1. So he didn't see it. He got so many breaks and now it's nearly mate. Gave the guy a question mark for playing king e7. Who can blame him? I still don't see the mate but bishop a3, I mean b3 and bishop a3 is going to be strong. That's greedy. Greedy, but the best move according to the engine. You gotta, you know, you want to play for a mate with b3 here. It's kind of like, how is this not mate? What am I missing? Surprisingly not mate. Rook g7, check. Knight b4. It looks insanely bad for black. But check, he gets away. It's actually not mate. And the queen is attacked. So at the end of the day, you can sack your queen for four pieces or something. But that's not necessary if you don't want to be fancy. So Astrobate, I understand grabbing the rook here. Okay, you grab the rook. No mate. And now he's going knight f7 check. Is there any other idea that's probably best? Here, here. You win the queen. Okay, he just resigns. Good job. But man, you can't violate principles. I've told you before. Knight h4, moving the same piece twice. It's a closed position, but you can't, you cannot try to do this. The other thing is you've got to think about that exchange of bishops. Do not trade those bishops off. The computer is right to suggest bishop b2. I know this looks passive, but in long-term strategy terms, I mean, that white squared bishop is a pawn, and your white squared bishop is a very valuable piece. It's looking both ways. You don't want that to happen, that the white squared bishops get exchanged. Um, all right, next up, Mr. Coffee. Bulgarian pro, we'll have to decline any blitz challenges here. Mr. Coffee. Hi, game two here in the study. I played a slightly different here against Shredder's Dutch opening. Dutch defense? 
The level was set to near my own strength, but let it let me made it rather than quickly after a peace sack. All right. So this is number two. Thank you guys for subscribing. The knight gets stuck on b6, no? Um, yo, I've booked the covers knight b6. What are you guys talking about, the scotch? Yeah, I always feel like that, but I'm no authority. I always feel the knight is so awkward on b6. In the lines of the scotch. Um, yeah, worth looking at, Astro Bane. I think it's instructive, but you've got to stay focused trying to play really good moves. Remember, the opening stage of the game, you can come fairly close to playing perfectly. We as human beings can come fairly close to playing perfectly. Um, you know, in, in end game maybe, but in middle game, forget about it. Try to focus in the opening to really try to play perfect moves. I know it sounds like an unrealistic goal, but I think we can approach it. Knight H4, you have to tell yourself, Ancient aliens actually exist. No, seriously. No! No, they don't, but maybe they do. Panda, what do you think? Uh, I think you're on a tangent. So, no, you have to tell yourself, you know, is this move adhering to fundamental principles? Be like Jonathan Rousen. Talk to your pieces. How are you doing out there, Knight in H4? You know? Is it... Is it cool out there that, like, you're out there on H4 in a vulnerable position, unprotected, and the rest of us are just all sitting here in the back rank? Um, you got to make sure you got you, you can play the opening really, really well if you adhere to principles, even if you don't know the theory in a strange opening like the birds opening. Um, George is playing white here against Shredder, an older engine. So he played D4, F5, Knight F3. I really like... You know, just in terms of the truth of chess, I like Bishop G5 against the Dutch, and I like Knight C3, but I think that you know, still the majority of people go for like a classical fianchetto. Listen, Mr. Coffee, you might want to try your E3 type of setup. Let's see if you do that here. Knight F3. You see, now I played E6. So what I was going to say was, I had a friend who used to do this. What is Axel Smith now? claiming this e3 poison thing but uh i had a friend who used to play this against the leningrad you know basically playing like you're playing uh playing like you're playing a king's indian against the french or the french against the king's indian attack so i think mr coffee this line would be actually quite you know quite good you could try some kind of very similar way of playing as if you would be playing against the king's indian uh, against the leningrad but in this case um I don't think that e3 is, is appropriate. I mean, it's probably okay to play e3, but not as much so as against... The, the Leningrad and the King's Indian are sort of closely closely related. Yeah. Um, so here, Bishop g5 right away. You know, I'm thinking that, like, Jinji actually recommended this at one point to me, and I tried it in the game, and I, like, got crushed by this guy... Paxton. Um, the one time I tried to play it, it just never really, never really did much for me. This this bishop g5 here. Roman was even recommending going like h4. Let's see, Korchnoi had done it a couple times. Julian Hodgson against Malcolm Pine. Who's winning the FIDE election? Yeah, but I mean, the Ponda likes this. Oh. I had to throw that in there, guys. The H4. But William doesn't believe in this. I played this in Blitz. It just seems kind of coffee house. Um, Alright, so George plays Bishop B5. Knight F6. And... Yeah, I mean, what should you do, though? I'm Bishop B7, if you don't like H4... You're kind of stuck, you know? You have to do this exchange... I remember I had another game against the guy where I just like drew really quickly. Like a weaker master. I couldn't do anything with white. It was just a dead draw. So that line, I'm not impressed by. Tory attack. What else can you do though? Change systems. I don't know. You know, start playing G3 maybe. But anyway, okay, fine. You know, for your purposes, you're not playing 2300s. It's probably enough that you have an equal position you can outplay the other guy. Um, now here is interesting. 
you could play a couple different moves here. Like, Knight BD2 is obviously a good idea. Juicebox Wizard, what's up? Take care. And thanks for, for hanging out with us. Knight BD2, the idea of playing for E4. So basically, we'll play like Bishop takes F6. And we could even transpose to uh, anti Dutch line. After takes, takes. This becomes one of those Knight C3 anti Dutches, where your Knight actually came from C3 to E4. Um, so that would be something to hope for, Mr. Coffee, if you could achieve that. It's like some people even took the G-Pawn here. Not an idiotic idea. Just very stupid. No, I'm just kidding. Pawn and Mario have played it, but no, it's Boris. A little weird. But I think Mr. Coffee here, Knight on BD2. My bigger concern, as I said, is, is the people that know what they're doing are going to play Bishop E7. And if you want to play H4... It's just a weird position after that. I guess it's okay. I don't know where your king's supposed to go. Knight bd2 has to be good. So here, here. You can play for e4 there. You know, maybe if you play knight bd2, they'll shut you down. You know, it's possible to play d5. Which is kind of boring, but probably not a bad move. If they play routinely, you're definitely good with bishop takes f6 and e4 here. So let's see what happens in the game. He plays e3. There will be no e4. <coughs> this is actually, I guess, a reasonable move. We do have the possibility of bishop b5 here. So, so far it just looks really passive. Really passive for white. After after e3, bishop e2. Too passive. I'm, I'm scared this bishop's going to get, like, trapped or something. Goes g5. I guess it's not that easy to trap the bishop. You also have these ideas of going bishop e5 check in some lines. Could you please go through a game of mine if I link it? I don't know if we have time, but I, you know, if we have extra time left over snooker lad, I'm basically I'm going over games for the subscribers here. Um, who are you talking about? So, g4. So black overextended himself a little bit. It's not necessary to play this move. Why not just, okay, this is Shredder on, it's set on a level to be approximately the same strength as Mr. Coffee. This d6 gives fluidity to the pawn structure. You know, so now you have to go back or play bishop takes f6. This is obviously bad. Um... Yeah, don't talk to me about playing nine nine year olds. I mean, I, I like play them every tournament. Like eleven year olds, man, I can't stand it. All right, d six, bishop g three. I don't want to play anybody who's like less than fourteen anymore. Um, it's just an awful feeling. Bishop b five. Here, this is mistake. Um, now, ninety two, I can understand your reticence to go to h4. I was, like, criticizing, you know, Asterbay for putting his knight on the side of the board. But the thing is, it's it's kind of somewhat justified because of that weakness on g6. Black might have to make a crazy move in order to prevent that. It's an exceptional situation. The, the exception to the rule here. It may not be that bad. I mean, probably plays like rook g8. When you play the black side of the Dutch, by the way, you've got to be really open-minded about your king position and stuff. You know, like Simon Williams plays the Dutch. He gets some crazy, crazy positions. Um, you've really got to be willing to go into those crazy positions. Not easy to do. Yeah, I know, I know. I played this little kid, and, like, his dad kept coming in the room, and then when I went in, like, the the analysis room like they they were like there with the trainer and the dad and they had like my my position was on the board like i felt really angry about that you know the little kid like didn't actually see the board but i felt very uncomfortable that like all of his trainers and and like and his parents are like sitting at the board where the exact position is like basically like you know 100 feet away um i complained to the arbiter i was like dude that's not right you can't do that 
Here, d6. Bishop takes f6. Mr. Coffee gives up the bishop. Major concession. Black's better now. But you're still solid. It kind of looks like you're playing the Karo Khan or something. I would, I would think about like c3. It looks passive, but actually there. You're going to have a problem with your knight. It is really, really passive for white. I mean, but like c4 and you have no control of the dark squares whatsoever. I'm afraid of that too, ultimately. Um, if you ever push d5, it's just like cave in on the dark squares. Maybe Mr. Coffee could play like c3, knight a3, and just try to defend kind of passive position. But I already don't like what you got here. Peter liked this move. Knight c3, maybe not, not weakening. You like this for white? Arsenal fan likes it. Well, it reminds, of, it reminds you of the game you drew against me last time. It was like two bishops versus two knights. And you created a kind of lock structure. I think you're just having like a, you know, a reminiscence or something. Um, yeah, this amazing little kids these days, how good they can be. Bishop b5. This I kind of like, you know, we could get into one of those two bishops versus two knights situations. If the board's closed enough, um, maybe white's not so bad. But it does harken back to what I was just talking about, Astro Bates game. I mean, this is literally the same thing. Bishop on d7, kind of bad against kind of good bishop on e2. So, but finding a plan for way in this position looks really, really difficult. You're passive. There's no obvious break. Okay, h3. But where's your king going to go? This is a bad square. Like, this is your only routine developing plan. Maybe knight b3, castles, queen side with queen d2. Black hasn't castled. He could go a5, a4 and launch on you with a5, a4 hitting your, your knight. Um, so it's like, you don't even know which side you want to castle on. Black can castle on either side here at any moment. Um, <laughs> you still feel feel proud for making a grown, man, a grown man GM cry at a weekender. Nice. I don't think I've ever seen a GM cry, but I have seen masters cry. Knight c3, bishop d7. I don't like this move, but it gives him some space to get his pieces out, which is his main idea, to play queen e2. So Shredder here, making some inaccuracies on purpose. He played a6. A nice job by Mr. Coffee. I mean, kudos to him for finding the sacrifice here with bishop takes a6. You're playing the computer, and even... Yeah, I would not name him. <laughs> even... Um, Even against a computer watered down level, um, I would be reticent to sack the piece. So Mr. Coffee probably had to like double triple check this before he, he sacked the piece here. But it looks really interesting. Bishop takes a6. And the computer takes it. It actually, Stockfish thinks it shouldn't take it. Takes it, takes it. Okay, the next move isn't obvious, but you have knight b5. So actually, if you think about it, king b8, knight b5, followed by knight c4, knight a5. Is there a way for black to get out of that? Because the plan looks really straightforward, right? King b8, knight b5, and now we're threatening, boom. Or we actually have two ways to get there from b2, and we decoy the knight. So decoying the defender from c6, defender of the mate on a7, c7. I don't think there's really a good defense. This is the best move according to the engine. Knight b3, now you're threatening knight a5. Bishop c8 just drops a piece. That's what I would expect. And now it's made in three. Wow. I mean, this does seem like pretty logical. I mean, the whole the whole point was to play, to play rook h7, defend c7, and then, you know, drop a piece, basically. There's no mate there. You play here. Now we just go back to being like, you know, two knights against two bishops. Actually, you're dropping g2, so it could even get very double-edged. The engine says white is still clearly better. I would be a little scared, though. You know, unable to castle. You've got you've to be accurate. Um, there is this check, though. I guess that's going to be pretty disruptive. Still a game. C5. So Mr. Coffee ends up winning. I mean, he plays... 
Night A5. The computer allows Night A5, and now it's just the, the, the mate on A7 is over. I mean, the main on B7 is the larger threat at the moment, you know, but, I mean, that's the point. There's no way to get away from both. If you take an A5, you get mated on C7. So the rook never had a chance to do the defense of C7. Yeah, Nigel. His chances of winning the world championship. What chances? Um, he didn't like the smart remark. It would be better to tell him that like 20 years ago. All right, we've got um, we've still got some time left for Nils's game. <laughs> Kasparov, Kasparov seems friendly with Short now. They have these exhibition matches sponsored by the St. Louis Chess Empire. All right, Haberbaum. Please analyze game three. Last time I asked for game three, you pressed the sync button just before starting. It took you to game one. Ah. So I analyzed the wrong game last time. Sorry about that. Bulgarian Pro. He's submitting a game. Did I press the sync button again? Look, I think we're on the wrong game again. Am I? I got into the wrong game. It wasn't me. I didn't press the sync button. I just pressed like another thing. It's very hard to stay on this game. Okay, so Haberbaum is white against uh, 1700. I guess these are ALO ratings. Wait, it's Neil Swint's turn. Sorry. All right, dude. I'm I'm a little bit heat heat stroke here. We're, we're doing Neil Swint's game. Page not found. That was the wrong one. I'm doing everything wrong, basically. I try to do everything wrong. Okay, true enough. I'm supposed to do Neil Swint first. This is the correct game. He's white. Over the, over the board. Played today, 90, 30 plus 30 minutes. Okay, classic time control. We'll do the next game next. If that makes any sense. So D4, Knight of 6. What's up? See you later, Yellow Dragoon. Thanks for hanging out and sharing some funny stories. Some short ones. Ha ha ha. C4, C5. So you're white, and it's a Benoni. Nice. We don't really have anybody on the stream who really plays the Benoni too much. The Czech Benoni. You found your remote. Awesome. E takes D, just don't wear the hot costume in 90 degree weather. Oh, dude, wear your cosplay costume to the tournament. <laughs> Alright, E4, G6, F4, the flick knife variation. So there was a time when this variation was considered like the, the way to test the modern Benoni. Um, I guess since that point, a lot of a lot of defensive defenses have been worked out to the point where it's like not that bad for black. Um, there's one variation that's kind of involving um, queen h4 check early and like black gets two pieces for the rook or something. I can't remember, but it was really very forcing long variation, some ending that was better for for white or something. Um, there, there are these people who play Queen E7 here. I don't know what the status of this is, but I think it was even mentioned by John Watson. I guess I had a Watson book on the Benoni. Why? But I'm just trying to think, like, why? Why did I have a John Watson book on the Benoni? Maybe I didn't actually have a book, but I just heard he recommended it or something. Um, does John Watson have a book on the King's Indian? And therefore... Maybe that would transpose the four pawns attack here, possibly. Does that explain anything? So queen e7 is a move, but I don't think that's that's really mainline. 
Bishop g7. Check. And then here's the key moment where knight fd7 is the main line. Okay, so the line I was just talking about was this. This knight on bd7 had a period of analysis where people were playing this to Palov back in 96, you see. So this variation here, d takes e5, um, f takes e5, knight h5, and e6, queen h4 check, g3, or king d2 apparently. So apparently king d2 or g3, let's say g3. This is the line I was talking about. What's the material here? Two pieces for a rook, right? Queen takes c, h1, and then bishop e3. So I don't know where this stands at the moment. I mean, like 20 years ago, this was a really trendy variation, and they considered it better for white. Um, maybe nothing has really changed, you know? In any case, I mean, okay, bishop b5 check, that was just an attempt to play knight on bd7. Uh, I don't know about the bishop d7, that's almost never played. This is like the correct line. And now, I've also, I think I've also played your line, um, this a4. I'm pretty sure I played this myself in a game against Chris Chase, who's like a Boston senior master, like a 2400 feet a master. Um, yeah, I had a match with Chase. He's like a decent FM, and I think I played A4 against him. I'm not sure it's the best move, though. I guess people also play, like, Bishop D3. This may be trending more now. I don't know. It's not clear, like, which move is best. There's also simply Knight F3. So, all these are possible. There's a famous game that Gary Kasparov won... I guess against John Nunn, but I guess the play in that game could have been improved for Nunn. So A4, now this line is, is the other line that's been been played. Maybe this is the line I was thinking of with the Queen E7. It must have been this, yeah. Okay, so this is another variation that has been, uh, yeah, you see there's even a recent game, 2017, Moisienko, White. So this was like Watson's recommendation for whatever that's worth, but that's from like 10 years ago. Um, I don't know where that stands either. So a6 is a wrong move, isn't it? a6 is just bad, I, I would think. You're supposed to castle, and then knight f3, and then all the theory is like knight a6. This is like none, the spar of none, right? Castles. Um... Knight, whoops, that's a bad mouse slip. Castles. And now knight before knight c7. Those are the questions. I'm just trying to find the Kasparov nun game. Is it f5 here? Malcolm Pine again. Maybe it was with knight on c7? That doesn't seem right though. It had to be like the next move. Knight c7, bishop d3. Maybe a6, f5. I can't remember now. Does anybody remember this? Very famous game. But I think that Black's play could have been improved. Anyways. Don't see a lot of recent games. What did what did Gashimov do? You know, this is like a very important idea. Um, let's view. Well, Yakovenko 0008. And Gashima was 0, 0, 0, 9. That's not bad. Castles, knight b4. This says a lot if Gashima chose this knight b4 variation. The guy knew everything there is. None didn't castle. The guy knew everything there is to know about the Benoni. And now rook e1, a6, and bishop f1. I guess this is where the theory like starts. Rook e8. Uh huh. This bishop b3 does seem like a strange move, but it's it's played successfully, number of games. Anyway, that that seems like it should kind of be a main line. 
these guys may have agreed to a quick draw. Um, all right, going back to the game though. What do we have here? I just inserted that. Hold on. So, you've got bishop d3. A6 was played. Sorry, a6, bishop d3. So now there's nowhere to put the knight. See, that's the problem. There's nowhere to put the knight. Black has some problems here. There's the Defermian game where he actually did this. That's sort of surprising. Nick's played the Benoni all his life. Um, knight f3. Well, I didn't even know this line like existed. 99. Yusupov versus the Fermian. Bela Perenni played it back in 88. The year before he died. It's a very famous Hungarian master who, who had a lot of theory in the Dragon and the and, and the Benoni, and he influenced the whole generation of players, and he died tragically at the peak of his powers. He was like GM strength. But um, this is weird. I've never seen this before. So you just go knight f6. I mean, it, it looks scary, but kind of makes some sense. So that's your game as well. Wow, okay. Knight f6, h3. You're following Yusupov versus the Fermian. Funny, because Yusupov is the guy who plays like d4, knight f3, e3 most of the time. Would I advise for amateurs to play the Benoni? Um, I mean, maybe. It's not, not bad. You get very tactical positions. So, I, I wouldn't think that it would be that hard to play if, if you can play well tactically. Um, it's certainly a complex opening, though. I had never seen this line before. I didn't know this was like a really credible variation for black. So I would be, I would be um, happy with White's game, thinking White has a good game. That was Defermian's move as well, or not? We've actually lost track of the Defermian game. So Nick must have played something else here. C four, Knight B D seven. May just be a move order thing. So he played c4 against Yusupov. And this was going back, this was played by Pereni against Lukacs. Bishop c2. And what did Nick do? So the other guys were all aggressive with like Queen, well, b5 especially. b5, what is b5? That's what Bela did. That's a little weird, isn't it? Like, how does that work? A takes b5. This should be 7. So he's, he's going berserk, basically. He's sacking a pawn here. I mean, that's like over the top. The Fermian just played like c4, bishop c2, knight bd7. Not going crazy. Castles. Rook b8. Just trying to slowly prepare b5. This is actually not so bad, maybe. That makes a lot of sense. The Dutch is much harder to play than the Benoni, I would think. Yusupov tried to get a knight on c6. Wow. This was kind of tactics. Man, that is crazy. And he gets this pawn on e4. Nice game, though. Very complicated. Black's pawns give him some compensation. Um, Alright, but getting back to your game. So, Black played rook e8. This is more of like common. Black can play c4 here. Doesn't do it. Rook e1. Very good move. Queen c7. And now bishop c2. Good prophylactic move. So I don't know who these guys are. Bo Chang. But um, you've got Ivan Farago with white and, 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 and then Portish's brother. So. But Farago is so solid. It's funny that, yeah, he actually is quite good against the Benoni. I think the Dutch, I would rather, I'd rather recommend the Benoni than the Dutch. The Dutch is very hard to play. Um, Kings Indian is hard to play too. 
they're more strategic, you know. I think the tactical opening might be understandable for certain beginning players. Rook b8 here in e5. Okay. So how does this work? We're just going to play d6 and then squash black. Interesting. Why couldn't that have been played like the move before, let's say? Because we didn't have bishop on there, and we're defending d6. That's interesting. Bishop c2. Following this game from 2018. And black misses the point. So apparently you're threatening e5 to support d6 with, with the queen. Wow. So you could get away with this. And now the knight doesn't have a good square. Only move, but there's knight d5. I mean, he could he could throw in a check with c4. That allows bishop b3. <coughs> I'd say his queen is going to get trapped there. c4 check, bishop b3, queen takes, queen d2, followed by rook b1. It's over. So very good. And now, I mean, even g4 might be enough. Just winning a piece, right? That's, yeah, I mean, still could be kind of dicey. Knight takes e5. We need something here. A little bit short of sort of sketchy, but still white's probably winning somehow. You didn't do g4, so you played 97 check here. And now knight g5. Oh, that's even worse. So knight g5, rook f8, then what? Something like... Yeah, so you freaked out. But I mean, what happens if, if rook f8? You just protect it. I mean, you have knight takes h7 at the very least with a very strong attack. I want to see what the engine says. Yeah, that's the best move. Very strong attack here. He went under pretty quickly. He played bishop takes e5. That just drops a piece. No, nice game. Nice game. The bishop c2, particularly, um, kind of a subtle move. The guy didn't see the threat of e5. Okay, guys. Um, so I got Haberbaum. And he's an ex-subscriber. Game three. <coughs> so this is game three. I got ten minutes left. I'll try to take a look at this and a quick look at uh, at J JCS. So everybody's white. Oh no, Nimzo, our favorite variation. Exchange variation. Here the knight can come to d two, e two. Excuse me. That's a good arrow. Why wouldn't my arrow go away, dude? Alright, I'm sorry. I drew an arrow in your study. I'm sure you can get rid of it. Bishop g5. Main line. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, I've been talking about this. Move 11 had a game earlier. I think that black should delay c6. That's the recommendation. But anyway, it's still okay for black. And now h3 here early. I, I, early. I don't know if there's any reason for this move to be played. But generally, Haberbaum is fairly well versed theoretically. So it's interesting that he chooses to play h3 here. A funny sideline I like to play comes the idea of retreating the bishop to f4 and playing knight f3 without having to worry about knight h5. Okay. It looks like a reasonable move. It could also transpose to Karpov style plans with h3 later on. Um, my only problem with the retreating to f4 is that typically what always happens to me is like people just go like bishop d6 and then they they trade it off anyway. But maybe if you can play knight f3, bishop d6, knight e5, and avoid exchanges of pieces. Um, I did mention earlier in the stream that h3 could involve weakening the king side, but it does look like an interesting idea. 
Um, okay, h6, I hate this move, but maybe it has a point to force you to do these exchanges now. But see, the thing is he can do, <coughs> he can do bishop d6, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry guys, he can do bishop d6, um, and then maybe you have to protect the bishop with a knight on e2 or something like that. I also don't really like h6. Wow, there's actually games now. Because it's like they did h6 first, and then you did h3. Vidyaki San, uh, Shandor, a recent game. 2016, he almost doesn't play. Um, so rook e8. I mean, I'm thinking bishop d6. Why is this bad? So Shandor played knight e2. Yeah, he's a good player. Well trained. I am. Solid. But, I mean, it's kind of hard to think of the plan, you know. Let's see what happened here. Queen c2. So Shandor could castle either way. You can kind of mix in these attacking plans with g4. That's pretty interesting, you know. It's pretty interesting. Oh, I like that. Um, so here, you just play knight f3. Now the difference is, okay, if they play bishop d6, my idea is to play this. Like mm Ivanov. That's got to be the plan. And the fact that Black, Black played h6 is going to hurt him, because he's never going to have f6 later on, having weakened the king side too much. So that dude managed to draw with the GM. Knight bd7, and then castles. So I think queen c2 would kind of keep him guessing a little bit better. Um, Mir Joeva, I think I beat her. I might have played a6 against her. Like e4, a6. I can't remember now. Queen c2, queen e7. Man, this is weird. Galyash Miklos had white. Blatny in 1992 against Ullman lost. What the heck kind of queen's gambit declined is this? Queen e7, g h6. Blatny plays some weird stuff, but this is apparently... Played in six games. Wow. Definitely a very unorthodox position for black. Queen e7. And apparently still theory. Prevents knight e 94 from being played. My main question is like, what is white's forward plan? You know? You're following Ullman. We're going to play on the queen side like a minority attack eventually. That I can I can I can identify with. I mean, Black's pieces aren't really properly placed. Okay, Black here went c5. That's a novelty. Not what I expected, but I mean, having played knight d2, c5 starts to make sense. Makes more sense than ever because you don't have much pressure on the center. Somebody played b5, Pavel did, you know, and he's a nutcase. He plays crazy chess sometimes. Capable of good results, but he lost against Ullman. I mean, b5 is really anti-positional. I mean, you know, you don't even have, like, a guaranteed outpost for your knight at c4 because white can play b3. b5 looks radically weakening. All the other players played knight b6. There was some simple developing like bishop e6, rook d8, and, and then, you know, hanging out or something. So, it's actually reasonable. Um, personally, yeah, I can see you're fearing, you know, or you're, you're avoiding knight e2. The point is if you play rook b1, then black can play like knight e4. Is that the deal here? Well, I mean, we just continue as planned. The black might or might not have some sort of kind of kingside shoving the pawns here. So he played c5. This totally changes the whole position. Play this move quickly. Regretted that you didn't play knight b5. Uh-huh. Yeah, that looks kind of crushing. Well, there doesn't, doesn't seem to be anything for black, really. Knight h5? Wow, that looks very strong. Well, I think that just wins. C4, even bishop f5 is possible. 
Let's say bishop e2. And now knight b6. Knight c7 winning the exchange. It looks good. So you took this without thinking. And I mean, yeah, you never want that knight to come into the game actively on c5. And now this is, we've seen this how many times today. This is the third example of bishop e5 versus bishop d7. A good bishop, bad bishop exchange. Very funny that that's happened three times in the in the games today. The black should be fine after this. He went from worse to absolutely fine. All the pieces are free. The exchange of that bishop helps him. If I turn on the engine now, it will it will say that black is is at least equal. Rook f d one. Here, this is a strange move. Okay, he's getting out of the, the line of the rook, but I mean, is there really any threat? Yeah, guys, please help to improve the stream by donating via PayPal. You can do so on Twitch or on YouTube. Ponda, thanks for watching today, guys. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. Let's, let's close this out. So, 94, black played well. This is weird, though. I mean, queen c6, queen c5. What's he doing with this queen like a forward piece? Very strange. You maintain your structural advantage. Now he's trading queens. Okay, fine. But you're like better now. Take with the knight, right? Another weird thing, it's, it's the same thing with the queen. He's like, he goes forward with his big pieces. Okay. A3 is suspicious. I want to get my king in the center. I think you ought to do this like really, really fast. It seems a lot more vital. You said taking the b4 from black's bishop, but what's black's bishop going to do on b4? I don't see that as a problem. Um, actually, in fact, like... You know, he's got to worry about rook c7 and stuff like that. Your priority should be getting your king in the center at this point. This is even putting these pawns in the wrong color. It might might not be a factor, but it might. And then g4. Um, maybe a good move if you can hold it together. If you can maintain g4, play like f3. Could be a good move. Coming with the king. Better late than never. Now you've got the f5 square. Better structure. Yeah, I don't know. We're going to need to do some king centralization. King looks good on d3. This is a good move. And... Yeah, like your pawns are fixed on the wrong color. But, I mean, if that means you're going to have more pawns than him, then it's probably a good thing. You picked up a pawn. I was actually expecting to play, like, rook c8 there. So, I'm going to finish this out pretty quickly because I gotta go these games were the last ones submitted bishop e5 and then this pawn is on the wrong color could be a target it is far back though but I think it's only a draw now he's smart not to trade trade uh, bishops you know he wants keep the pieces on. F4 is a very strange move by black. This is probably a good losing attempt. But I mean, actually, maybe he doesn't have that many moves. So the A4 pawn could be weak now for him. Interesting. But he can take twice and play like 95, no? And it should be a draw. Played 95 first. And gives gives you this end game. I was telling you about that pawn. Interesting end game. Wow. And then he can't get at your pawn. It's very weird. Wow. So he's lost. Despite that pawn being on a bad square. Dude, you better watch out for d3. Knight takes d3. Bishop takes b2. Knight takes b2. a3. Dude, does that work? It doesn't work now. <laughs> Due to... King takes f6. Oh my god. That's insane. This line he gives. That's awesome. Also queen d8 there. Mate is better. So the d3 doesn't work. It almost worked. Take care. <laughs> that's 
Dangerous having the pawn on B2. So you got two connectors, it's just a win. This should be a win. Alright, good job. So the last game, um, I'll just JCS very quickly go over this. I got just uh, two minutes. I gotta go. Um, JCS was white. Looks like a really good game. What was this? The game you won against me? Wait. Oh, this is where I dropped a piece. Okay. So, sadly, looking at this from White's perspective, JCS played bishop g5 here. For some reason, I really th thought that like most people would be more playing bishop e3 when they see a6. But he, he played bishop g5. It's, it's good, too. Surprisingly, not many people play knight on bd7. Um, I thought I was worse. But the other plan is really important. I mean, I know that c5 is probably... A main line. We might transpose to a lot more theory after this. Surprise there's not more games, but generally speaking, black will be castled in this position. If we make another move, like knight h3, um, castles, let's say, or castles, now we have quite a few games. You see, like there's 20 games, 30 games, 40 games instead of like five games. The weird thing is that I haven't castled yet. This is the first time I've played this. Um, bishop g5 here. Queen d2. And then... It looked like JCS played this really well. He's better all the way. I, I don't like my bishop on b7. But I wasn't really sure about the other plans here. And I didn't want to commit to castling yet. So, played this, this... Looks like white played this really well, <clears throat> honestly. I played c5. Next move, I guess. First queen b8. Okay, this is a Maxim Blugi idea. Looks like white's much better. What's the plan, though? Rook fd1. c5. Here. I was surprised when you took. I thought, I thought like, d5 is more combative. But then again, it's hard to find your plan after that. I think this is really should be considered though. D5. I know you, I also prefer bishop g5 to bishop b3 systems, but for some reason I thought against a6, that kind of move people would prefer to go with bishop b3. Um, so you take, and then what, b4? b3, yeah. This is also very restrained. So you play too cautiously. It's like you can play for b4 and, and go for this queenside majority. Um, I think I think that's good. So I wasn't happy with the result of this. I would play this differently if I had it to do over again. Um, basically, JCS playing very very solid. Pawn takes now, and I'm not concerned if I lose a pawn in opposite color bishop endgame. Ninety three. Yeah, and I don't know why I didn't trade. Say. I totally missed knight b4. See, this is where I let it slip. I was content that my position was okay. And then I was sitting there and I was like, okay, whatever. You know, he did knight d3. If I was playing a tournament game, I would have exchanged knights and saw that you were threatening knight b4. But the, the threat just popped up and I didn't see it. And then I was like, oh my god, he has knight b4. So this is this is really bad for me now. With the knight entrenched on on c6. This was This was like a desperation move. And I'm not sure that, like, you know, you, you played the perfect moves here. King h1, you, you didn't do anything. Um, but I blundered ridiculously. Actually, here I was thinking to move my other rook. I don't know why I didn't, to be honest. It even went through my mind that, like, the a6 pawn might be weak, you know? So I just didn't think I was going to drop a piece, though. I played this. He plays, what, knight takes e5, bishop takes e5. And I thought this is slightly worse for me, but I'll hold, you know. But I didn't see the threat at all in this position. I was only looking at the a6 pawn. So I forgot, you know, that I just need to defend with bishop f6 or something. But white's just slightly better. It's kind of a normal position, like a Marazzi. I have a kind of torturous, slightly worse, but 
you know, it depends. Against most people, I would probably be able to hold a draw. Against really strong players, I might lose. Um, but I just dropped a piece here with a really stupid blunder. If I had five minutes, actually, we both had five minutes at this point. We played rook a8, just protecting my pawn, which is ironically not even necessary, you know. I mean, if he plays bishop takes c5, even if I lost that pawn, it wouldn't be easy for white. But I can, I can basically allow that. So let's see, like, bishop f6, bishop takes c5, bishop takes a6, for example. And here I'm a pawn down, but I have a healthy structure. So it's funny, even though you have a, the two connected pawns, um, you're up a pawn and you have two connected past pawns. With the opposite color bishops, it's not that easy to make progress. So it was, it was a really bad blunder. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me for the subscriber stream. Thanks everyone who donated to support the stream, including JCS. And uh, and here I just dropped a piece. So I played rook a8, and he took here. And I was like, oh man, what am I doing? You know, so we lost this piece on e5. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and thanks for playing um, this week. I will be back. ID Bart, you're welcome. Um, I will be back, let's see, tomorrow's Friday, Friday morning, 10 a.m. EDT. 10 a.m. EDT here, uh, faster blitz, 5 plus 3 against all the challengers. Okay, guys? Thanks, Soltinko, for your help, and uh, we will be back again tomorrow. Good games. Bye-bye. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Fast Blitz, H4.